Over the weekend, I had the opportunity to do something that I've been waiting to do for a very long time. I went back to the cinema for the first time since last October. Going to the cinema has always been something that we've tried to do regularly as a family. The first time I took my son Dom to the cinema, he was about three years old and we went to watch Toy Story 2. It got to the end and he refused to budge, demanding instead that we rewind it so that he could watch it again. He didn't watch stuff on television at that age, but he was used to watching videos, mainly Disney ones. And even then he had his favourite moments that he knew he could rewind and watch as many times as he wanted. He would often later reenact those scenes with his toys and my mum was frequently enlisted to make costumes for Dom and for his toys so that it was a much more immersive experience. For the last few years we've had cinema season tickets so we've been able to go as much as we want without having to pay each time. We've even got a cinema bag that we take with us containing flasks and snacks and blankets. It's always quite cold in there. So we're pretty much ready to go at a moment's notice. During the lockdown periods when the cinemas have been closed, there have been many occasions when Trin has said, I miss the cinema. So at the first opportunity we could manage, off we went. And it was great to be back. We had a lovely time and we really appreciated the chance to do something together and then all the conversation that we could have about the film in the car on the way back home. Over the last few years, my prayer life has changed considerably. I think that's a good thing. If I was praying in the same way today that I was 20 years ago, I think there would be a problem. I'd certainly be stuck in a rut and it would seem that I hadn't grown much spiritually at all. So I'm very glad of the changes and in some ways they have surprised me. I've always been a person who has loved words. Language amazes me. I love making connections between words and seeing how languages, other languages like French, Italian and Spanish have so much in common. I think there's almost nothing better than a beautifully crafted paragraph in a novel or the way a poet expresses a metaphor. And there are some sentences that seem to almost feel really good in my mouth when I say them out loud. The way that I grapple with parts of faith that bother me or with things generally that seem difficult is to write about them. So there was a time when a lot of my praying was focused around words and I can still find myself rabbiting away to God frequently during the day. But more and more I've come to appreciate the blessings of sitting with God in silence, just focusing on being there with God, trying not to be overly obsessed with myself and what I really want to say. I find there's a deeper awareness of the presence of God when I shut up, which is sometimes even tangible. Sometimes it takes me a while to get to the stillness, to let go of myself and all the things that are on my mind, and so often I start with something else. I might play the piano or sit with some crochet and I find that the occupation of my hands helps to release my spirit to fly into the awareness of the presence of God. There are other people I know who use jigsaw puzzles, doodling, woodwork and colouring to do the same thing, and others who occupy their feet rather than their hands by walking into quiet communion with God. I've tried to think of ways to describe this, usually at risk of sounding either hyper-spiritual in a bad way or airy-fairy. But recently somebody told me the process of entering into prayer could be described as like going to the cinema. When you arrive at the cinema, you're very much focused on yourself, picking up tickets, going to the toilet, raiding the pick and mix and choosing a drink and then finding the right screen, showing your tickets and entering into the dark to try and find your seat. Once you're sitting down, you start to prepare a bit more for the film you're there to see. You start to relax in. You're feeling a bit more excited about what's going to happen next. You're still aware of yourself, partly because the lights are usually still on to a degree until all the adverts and trailers have finished. Then finally the film begins and you gradually lose yourself. If it's a good film, you're able to forget about yourself and engage with the film fully. If it's a really good film, you're able to almost become part of it, completely absorbed in what's happening, as if you are part of the story. Some days I don't get much beyond picking up my popcorn and settling into my seat. 
But there are other times when an awareness of the presence of God absorbs me. I feel the connection of the Spirit holding me to God, drawing me closer. I can almost see it like a ribbon. And sometimes, rarely, like on one occasion last year when I was picking strawberries, that becomes so intense that I get a deep sensation of the goodness of God being an elemental part of me and all creation, holding all things together. Famous mystics like Julian of Norwich have tried to put this into words. Those times of stillness with God, when all my mind and will are directed towards God, are a real blessing to me. And it does usually take a conscious withdrawing, an intentional setting aside of time for me to find it. What I'm trying to do now is to learn how to tune into that connectivity, that inner stillness and presence, even when I'm in the middle of something else. Can I turn my heart and mind to God when I'm running to a schedule? Can I find that peace and presence while I'm rushing to cook dinner before a meeting? Can I tap into that oneness with God right in the middle of a meeting? How can I cultivate this more and more in the times of the day that don't feel particularly quiet or still or peaceful or special? Being immersed in the film is great and I'm taking heart from the memories of Dom when he was so tiny. The film finishes and his attention is no longer on the screen. Instead, he chooses to enact it in what happens next. He lives it out in his play. There is something very appealing about retreating, whether that's physically going away somewhere for a few days or simply finding that space apart at points during a normal day. But I know that my closeness with God is not to be reserved for those special moments. It's to be lived out in what happens next. It's to shape and frame the story of my life. It's to be evident in the way I live and the things I do and the choices I make and the love I show to others. If it doesn't carry on beyond the moment, then what's it really all about? It's perhaps like watching something with the sound off. You can kind of see what's happening, but you're not really engaged and it doesn't have the same impact on you. I'm looking forward to many, many more trips to the cinema in the weeks ahead. There are a lot of films to catch up on, things I've heard advertised or discussed and want to know more about. The more I'm excited about thinking about going to the cinema, the more I realise that I want my faith to be more like a film. I want to act boldly and passionately and gracefully, immersing myself in it so that it becomes more and more a part of who I am. I want my life to be like a film. The script may not seem very clear at times. There are plenty of times when I wonder what's going on and who else is going to be involved in this scene and can I cope with the stunts and how can we possibly produce a happy ending out of this. But I know I can trust the writer and director come what may. Most of all I want to play my part well, doing justice to the one into whose hands I have committed everything in whose story my own story finds life.